The following presentation aims to sketch out the basic elements of a new ecological sanitation concept to replace the present day to all to the sewer system in a concept we have called ECOSAIN, E C O S A I N, as opposed to the better known ECOSAN, a carry all term for a concept that aims to express similar intentions but which is inconsistent in the guidelines it puts forth. Today, selective urban waste collection is no longer disputed as a means towards the recycling of our waste. And yet, we don't realize that our all-to-the-sewer sanitation system follows the same all-trash-to-the-garbage logic that has, until recently, dominated urban waste management. Its consequences, however, are far more grievous because the current system seriously threatens global food production for future generations. Urban wastewater is a mixture of two different types of wastewater, grey water, containing soaps and detergents, and black water, containing human dejecta, organic matter and bacteria. Combining grey water with black water has a disproportionate environmental impact that no wastewater treatment, however efficient, can alleviate. The key to a truly sustainable solution lies in the selective treatment of grey water separate from black water. When you analyze the differences between these two types of wastewater, two important facts are revealed. First, black water contains harmful domestic waste in the following proportions. 99% of our bacteria, 90% of our phosphorus, and 98% of our nitrogen. These elements, mixed in with medicinal residues, constitute a serious threat to the receiving milieu. Second, human dejecta represent only 1% of the total combined urban wastewater volume. What a paradox! Almost all of the harmful pollutants are found in only 1% of our urban wastewater. And yet this 1% becomes truly harmful because it is diluted and then treated in a conventional sanitation plant. When you remove human dejecta from wastewater, a new situation presents itself. Grey water, which would only pose a threat to the environment if it were discharged in a river, lake or sea, can be more usefully reclaimed for agricultural food production and or to replenish our underground water tables. Water currently used for flushing our toilets can be made available for other uses, while our dejecta will be treated as a raw material resource. If we hope to attain sustainable water management and sustainable food production, we must abandon all main sewerage. Human dejecta are normally an integral part of Earth's nitrogen and carbon cycles. Yet we are currently drawing this resource away from those cycles by releasing it into waterways and or destroying it in sanitation plants, thereby polluting the environment with nitrates, phosphates and bacteria by way of sewage sludge and so-called treated wastewater. These, with pollution from industrial agriculture, are responsible for the eutrophication of our lakes and rivers. Meanwhile, massive destruction of organic matter by means of wastewater treatment not only wastes precious animal-based biomass, but also plant-based biomass, both of which are thus removed from the process of humus formation for soil. The nitrogen and phosphorus contained in our excreta are drawn off earth cycles thus requiring agriculture to replace the missing nutrients with synthetic fertilizers with grave consequences. Eliminating all main sewerage will help restore these natural cycles. Our food comes from the earth and naturally our excreta, including those of animals, must go back to the earth. But this must be done correctly. The key to sustainable food production is returning all our organic waste both animal and plant-based, back towards the formation of humus in soil. Two options are available to replace all main sewerage. First, in peri-urban and rural areas, the use of dry toilets combined with backyard composting, or the use of turbo toilets and septic holding tanks managed in conjunction with the implementation of integrated biomass treatment centers. And second, in urban areas, the collection and selective treatment of grey water separate from black water. 
Implementing this new system will have little impact on users' lifestyle behaviors. Existing flush toilets will simply be replaced by a new type of flush toilet, the turbo toilet, whereby each flush will deliver very little water, thus producing concentrated black water that is fluidified by means of a grinder. This is a necessary condition for such wastewater to properly impregnate a cellulosic substrate prior to composting. In this new system, in peri-urban or rural areas, gray water produced by the household will be discharged into a leach field type dispersal system or used to irrigate plants. Although the use of a dry toilet is less expensive, it need not be the only solution for the processing of human waste. Turbo toilets could discharge human waste into a septic holding tank from which the organic matter would be conveyed to a biomass treatment center for impregnation and subsequent composting. In urban areas, on the other hand, existing sewers would be converted to only drain domestic gray water and roadway stormwater runoff towards slow-flowing wetlands that would become a sort of natural aquatic reserve. We have observed that in the absence of black water, gray water purification occurs naturally thanks to daylight and air, without the need for human intervention or energy consumption. This wetland approach isn't a phytoremediation or plant purification technique. Gray water contains no nutrients useful for plants except maybe for nitrates found in city tap water. Gray water that is purified by means of this wetland approach is even likely to be of better quality than the water found in the receiving water body. In dry areas, all the wastewater generated by cities would be conveyed to farmland as a means of irrigation. In fact, without human dejecta, wastewater no longer poses a health hazard or a pollution risk to our groundwaters. Concentrated black water that comes from turbo toilets would be conveyed to a biomass treatment center for impregnation. In urban areas, this would be by way of a separate sewerage network. In peri-urban and rural areas, the effluent would have to be trucked to the treatment center, after which the impregnated cellulose litter would be composted for a full year prior to being spread on farmland. Even if the technical details on turbo toilets have yet to be tied down, impregnation in composting centers already exist as a waste management technique for the treatment of domestic septic tank sludge. Black water is screened and decanted prior to being spread on a carbon-based litter for subsequent composting. The materials to be impregnated include such cellulosic waste as cardboard boxes, soiled paper, shredded wood, and leaves from city park maintenance, agricultural and agro-industry waste, and so on. The compost obtained will be used to fertilize farmland. An important point. Medicinal and drug residues contained in human waste are fully eliminated during composting. Nowadays, conventional sanitation is incapable of filtering out these harmful byproducts and discharging them in the receiving water bodies. In addition, Consider that composting can produce a considerable amount of usable energy, say for example for the heating of greenhouses or homes, especially in peri-urban and rural areas. The considerations developed herein fundamentally question mainstream views and other preconceived notions on matters of sanitation in our modern world. To better understand this uncommon vision, you can visit our website www.otarc.org, where you will find all pertinent information to help you make your own opinion on the matter.